On 28th February 1947, British Prime Minister Clement Attlee made an important announcement in the British Parliament's House of Commons. He promised that the British would leave India by 30th June 1948. But if the Indian leaders did not come to a common solution regarding the constitution according to the cabinet mission before the declared date, then the British government might have to decide to whom the powers of the central government in British India should be handed over on the due date. Since May 1946, it had been Britain's policy to peacefully transfer power to a united India. By February 1947, however, communal tensions owing to the differences between the Indian National Congress and the Muslim League regarding partition of India reached its peak. The demand for the partition of Bengal had triggered riots in Calcutta and Nokali in 1946. The coalition ministry of Punjab collapsed due to direct action in Punjab. Political instability and civil conflicts tensed up everywhere. India was almost on the verge of a civil war. The broad constitutional principles prescribed by the British cabinet mission for the purpose of bridging the gap between Congress and the Muslim League had been put on hold. Atlee also announced a change in viceroyship. It was decided that Lord Mountbatten would replace Lord Vavil. He was to be the last Viceroy and was given the charge of winding up the British Raj by 30th June 1948. Mountbatten was given more powers than his predecessors to settle the matters sooner. Mountbatten was directed to explore different prospects for the handing over of power. If a transfer of power to a united India seemed impossible, then he was to report to the British government by 1st October 1947 regarding the steps to be taken further. And so, on 23rd March 1947, Lord Vavil left India and on 24th March 1947, Lord Mountbatten assumed office as the new Viceroy of India. Mountbatten knew about the rising political tensions even before he came to India. The main task that Mountbatten was charged which was to complete the transfer of power as soon as possible. But he was also entrusted with the responsibility of restoring peace among the two communities. He had to perform the task to resolve the crisis within the interim government over budget issues and in the country at large. Lord Mountbatten was first expected to find an agreed solution for a united India based on the cabinet mission plan and he set about quickly on this path. But in the course of his talks with the party leaders, particularly with Jinnah and his colleagues, he became more and more convinced that an alternative plan for the transfer of power had to be found and implemented soon to ease the growing political tensions. Jinnah was adamant that the Muslim League would settle for nothing less than a sovereign Pakistan. Mountbatten had a series of 133 interviews with political leaders between 24th March and 6th May 1947, that is, within six weeks of his arrival. After ceaseless effort, he realized that the cabinet mission framework would not work and that there was a need to prepare an alternative plan for the transfer of power. This alternative plan was prepared by General Sir Hastings Ismay, Sir George Ebel, and Lord Mountbatten himself. This plan was known as the Dickey Bird Plan or Balkan Plan. The Balkan Plan was drafted and presented on 15th April 1947 by Hastings Ismay to the Assembly of Provincial Governors in Delhi. This plan was not discussed in detail with Indian leaders. 
But Mountbatten gave the plan a final touch and sent it to London on 2nd May 1947. The Balkan plan envisaged a transfer of power to separate provinces or to confederation if they were formed before the transfer. Punjab and Bengal assemblies were given the option to vote for the partition of their provinces. The plan also proposed that these provinces along with the princely states would be rendered independent by lapse of paramountcy. These separate provinces along with the princely states would have the choice of joining India, joining Pakistan or remaining separate on the basis of self-determination. The provinces would be free to join one or more group assemblies while the interim government would remain until June 1948. It meant that India would not be partitioned into two countries, but dozens of countries. Each of the 11 British provinces and 559 princely states would have the right to secede and the right to become independent starting with the rejection of an Indian Union as the successor to power, the plan invited the claims of a large number of successor states. These successor states would be permitted to unite if they so wished into two or more states. On 10th May 1947, Mountbatten presented the details of the Balkan plan to Nehru in Shimla. Jawaharlal Nehru vehemently opposed the plan, saying it would lead to balkanization of the country and made it clear that Congress would in no circumstances accept it. Nehru sent a note to Mountbatten expressing his disagreement with the plan. He said, The picture presented by the proposals was a disastrous one. Not only they threaten India, but also they endanger the future relations between British and India. Instead of producing any sense of certainty, security and stability, they would encourage disruptive tendencies everywhere and chaos and weaknesses. They would particularly endanger important strategic areas. Jawaharlal Nehru also felt that these proposals could instigate civil conflict, violence and further breakdown of the central authority. Considering the issues in the Balkan plan, V.P. Menon and Vallabhai Patel suggested the transfer of power to two independent central governments, India and Pakistan, based on the grant of dominion status. This suggestion was taken up instead of the Balkan plan. Mountbatten was convinced by now that partition of the country was inevitable. It was the only solution to end the communal riots and establish peace. Therefore, he went to England with his alternative plan, which was based on granting dominion status to the two central governments. Prime Minister Sir Clement Attlee's cabinet endorsed the plan and Sir Winston Churchill was delighted that India had finally agreed to a dominion status. On 3rd June 1947, Lord Mountbatten introduced his plan to Jawaharlal Nehru, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, Sadaa Vallabhai Patel, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Baldev Singh, Liaquat Ali Khan and other leaders. This plan was famously known as the Mountbatten Plan or the 3rd June Plan. The plan included provisions on partition, autonomy, and sovereignty that would be applicable to both the dominions along with the right to make their own constitution. Majority of the Indian leaders collectively endorsed the Mountbatten's plan. Now, what were the clauses of the Mountbatten plan? The most important clause in the plan was partition. Pakistan would be separated from India, thereby forming two dominions, India and Pakistan. The plan suggested that the members of the legislative assemblies of Punjab and Bengal should meet separately in two groups each, one from the representatives of the predominantly Muslim areas and another from the representatives of the predominantly Hindu areas. 
if both groups of each of these assemblies voted for partition, then that province would be partitioned. The plan suggested a referendum regarding the issue of the Silhet district. The district of Silhet in Assam had a Muslim majority population. If Bengal decided in favor of partition, a referendum was to be held in the Silhet district of Assam to decide whether it would join East Bengal or remain in Assam. The Legislative Assembly at Sindh was also given the choice of either to join the existing Constituent Assembly of India or not. It decided to join Pakistan. For the Northwest Frontier Province, a similar referendum was proposed to decide its allegiance. The Northwest Frontier Province decided to join Pakistan, but Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan boycotted and rejected the referendum. The plan mentioned that the treaties signed by the British with the princely states were to come to an end and they would be free to join either India or Pakistan or to remain independent. If the country was to be partitioned, then the most important thing to do would be to draw boundaries. So the Viceroy would set up a boundary commission to demarcate the boundaries of the provinces by ascertaining the contiguous majority areas of Muslims and non-Muslims. In June 1947, a boundary commission was set up under the chairmanship of Sir Cyril Radcliffe for demarcating the boundaries of the new parts of Punjab and Bengal. The two dominions could decide on how relations would be with each other and with the British Commonwealth. Now that there would be two autonomous dominions two different countries, there should be different constitutions as well. That means two different constituent assemblies. The work that the original constituent assembly had already begun with would not apply to Pakistan, which would require a new assembly for itself. This new constituent assembly would be applicable to those areas of India that accepted the partition and joined Pakistan. The plan declared that the title of Emperor of India would be dropped by the British monarch. The final clause in the Mountbatten plan was that the transfer of power and this was to take place on 15th August 1947. We saw earlier that one of Lord Mountbatten's main talks was to make the transfer as quickly as possible, perhaps before the agreed date of 30th June 1948. Now that we have discussed all the provisions of the Mountbatten plan, a question arises. Was the plan unanimously accepted? Did the Muslim League agree to it? And what about the other parties? How did they all react to this plan? The Mountbatten plan was approved by almost all the leaders and parties. The Muslim League was overjoyed with the plan since it recommended the separation of the Pakistan from India. So they formally accepted the plan on 10th June 1947. As for Congress, they too felt that the partition was the only solution for the ongoing communal riots. They felt that it was the only way to maintain peace and avoid further bloodshed in the subcontinent. So they also accepted the plan, though they were not entirely happy with the outcome. Gandhiji still opposed the partition, but the other Congress members persuaded him to give it the green signal. Congress was willing to accept dominion status for a while to ensure a peaceful and quick transfer of power. But Congress felt that they must assume full power immediately and boldly face the explosive situation in the country. The dominion status would also enable India for its much-needed continuity in bureaucracy and defence. For British, establishing dominion status offered a chance of keeping India in the Commonwealth owing to India's economic and defence potential. Also. Britain had a great scope for trade and investment in India. One of the major reasons for an early date for withdrawal was the desperation of the British to secure Congress's agreement on dominion status. 
Further, the British also wanted to escape the responsibility of the rapidly deteriorating communal situation. Finally, on 15th June 1947, Congress formally accepted the plan. They feared that if the partition was delayed, then the country would plunge into a civil war. They hoped that the partition would resolve the ongoing communal conflicts. As for the provinces that were given the choice of being partitioned, East Bengal, West Punjab, Sindh and Northwest Frontier Province voted for Pakistan. As discussed earlier, Silhet voted to join East Bengal. Lord Mountbatten finally brought an agreed solution between the Congress and the Muslim League. He secured from Jinnah the acceptance of the partition of Punjab and Bengal, and from Nehru the acceptance of dual dominion hood as a final settlement for the problems associated with partition. It is worth mentioning that Mountbatten was the first Governor-General of India. <laughs>